Good morning guys, welcome to another episode, another video, uh, whatever you'd want to like to call it. So anyway, uh, today I have some stuff to do with the Integra. Um, I haven't been uploading much, like I said, just because I haven't had much to do. Because I am trying to pay off my other bills and, you know, do this whole adult thing for a little bit, try and get kind of caught up. And uh, yeah, and it's just been so stupidly hot out here in Arizona. So. Um, I finally got a idler control valve for my Integra, but you know, with one solution comes two more problems. So basically what's going on is I have put the idler control valve on because if you didn't know, when I bought my K-tuned uh, 70 mil throttle body and I had installed it, um, I was hand tightening my idler control valve and they corrode over time. That's just what they do. Um, that's why they get stuck and whatnot. And it just snapped like right in half. So I haven't had an idler control valve in months 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 even the last time I got tuned I didn't have it but I asked my tuner when I go to get another idle air control valve um, if he's gonna have to change anything he said no all I'm gonna have to do is uh, slap it on and the computer will do the rest so that's what I did except for now I'm having some issues where the car see I'm, this is the thing is I don't know if it's idle air control valve related or if it's TPS slash throttle body related the throttle does feel like it is sticking pretty good um, because I when you're running no idler control valve you have to tighten the throttle stop down like two threads to just pry it open just enough so it doesn't stall out and that's what I did so I don't know if maybe over time it just kind of wore into the boring of the throttle body or the throttle plate got something on it. I don't know I cleaned it up and whatnot when I uh, when I put it all together so right now Brian's suggestion, uh, Brian at Hasport, he suggested that I um, try the idle relearn procedure. And basically the way he said to do it on this is um, with my ECU setup and whatnot, I don't know. I think there's a few different ways to do it. But basically start the car, don't touch the gas, let it warm up till the fans kick on, which mine are always on. So he said till the thermostat opens up and my lower hose gets hot. So once that's um, hot, then I just full throttle rev it, bounce it off the limiter for a couple seconds, let it idle drop all the way down and then kill the car but I have to reset the ECU before I do that so um, that's gonna tell the supposedly tell the throttle or the computer I'm sorry where the closed throttle open throttle is so hopefully that works but before I do that I did check my TPS yesterday my voltage and it's supposed to be 0.49 volts closed throttle and mine was at 0.55 so I don't know how much of a difference it's gonna make but I'm going to try and adjust it I remember before having issues I have the K-tuned Hall effect sensors let me show you that so I know I give k tuned a lot of grief um, in a lot of my videos. So just to be fair, I've had nothing but issues with their products. Um, their Hall Effect sensor, for example, I have never been able to calibrate this thing to the correct voltage spec. Their throttle body, I've had nothing but issues with sticking the throttle plates and such. Um, their shifter, I gotta, I gotta admit, I love the shifter. It's good quality. The header, have nothing that it's, it's pipe. <laughs> I mean, let's be real here. But everything else that I've ever had K-tuned wise has just been cheap garbage. So I have my reasons. I don't know. A lot of you guys are K-tuned fanboys because you like hopping on the train. Maybe you want brownie points with them. Maybe you will try and get some free parts or something later on for depending on them. I don't know. I don't really care, honestly. I just know that my experience with K-tuned has been unpleasant so far. And I'm going to try and calibrate this TPS again. So basically, I got my uh, sensor... Yeah, I'm sorry, I got the harness right here, so I gotta grab my uh, little clip jumper thing to stick in there so I can touch the wire. Um, yeah, so K-Series, what we're looking to try and get is 0.49 volts closed throttle and then 4.8-ish, I think, wide open throttle. Um, and then I, I might try and adjust the throttle stop a little bit because my cable has more than, like my cable's backed all the way out, so. Um, I know that cable tension is not my issue. I was messing with it the other day. So I guess first things first, let's start with this uh, TPS. All right, so this is what I like to use when I am uh, doing my K-Series TPS at least, because on the B-Series TPS, I have a little jumper harness that I had made. Um, I had mentioned that John Widmer had made one before and I stole his idea. So with this one, I just needed something sharp to stick in the back of the wire because I do not have any extra K-series harnesses right now. And these wires are a lot, lot smaller than a B-series. So I'm just sticking this pretty much right in the back of the connector here. And 
we get our multimeter, we set it to voltage. I ground it out here on my uh, headlight tab. And let's see what we're reading right now. Ah, car's gotta be on first. I mean, not on, on, but I gotta adjust these doors. if we're getting any signal now. Yeah, uh, let's see if I can get you guys to see that. All right, so you can kind of see that. So right now we're sitting at uh, 0.55 volts. Um, that's a little bit too high, so I gotta Loosen this TPS up. All right, so now we can uh, try and slide this thing around. Yeah, see, this is the issue I was having before, is there's no adjustment. I know I'm pinning the right wire. It's not doing nothing. Yeah. Huh. Um, basically what's happening is it's not changing in voltage, like when I'm going through, like when I'm turning the uh, TPS. Normally that would more or less mean that the TPS is bad, and as much as I want to dog on k tuned right now, I'm not giving it an entirely fair chance yet because I haven't fully diagnosed it. So, um, if you guys don't know, this is the Hall Effect sensor, which is like a uh, magnetic design. There's no contact points, it's supposed to be more accurate, last longer, blah, blah, blah. And K2 and Mike, according to the K28 forum, says they've only had one failure to date. And that was as of like three, four years ago when the forum was last updated. Um, but I'd like to think that since then, the quality of these things would have hopefully improved. So, what Brian told me to just do, I don't know why I put my multimeter away, is he told me to back probe it like I have right now, and then just sweep the throttle and see if that it see if it makes adjustments, like if the voltage goes up smoothly or if there's any jumps. So um, I can do that by myself right here. I don't really need anybody else to help. So let's see. So yeah, we're reading point more or less 0.53. This might be a little bit harder than I thought this is. Yeah, 0.53. Yeah, and we're only getting 3.9 volts at the uh, at wide open throttle and it was just jumping all over the place. Here, I'll move the camera and do it again so you guys can see it. Right, so, got a good ground. Should be successfully back probed. Oh, that's weird, now it's acting normal. But yeah, the voltage is only going to 394, so. Okay, well, I don't know what that means then. <laughs> All right, well, um, the first time, maybe I just didn't have the uh, the pin on the on a good part of the connector or whatever, so it was jumping all over, but that one, it went smoothly, so I'll take the second one because I, I was holding it a little bit more firm. I'll be fair, I'll be fair K-tuned, um, but I don't really know, so I guess all I can really do now is try the idle relearning procedure. I just got off the phone with Brian just to reiterate on what I'm supposed to do. And uh, he says, just yeah, fire it up, don't touch the gas, let it go until the lower radiator hose has heated up so you know coolant's flowing through it. And then just full throttle for two, three seconds. And then um, let the idle drop all the way down, kill the car. So I'm gonna go in, unplug the ECU really quick to reset it. And uh, I'll just try it that way, see if that does anything. All right, so I've got my ECU mounted up here on the firewall. So I can get to my plugs directly right here. For the most part.
Okay, now we'll uh, now we'll wait a couple seconds. All right, so the ECU's been reset. Let's fire it up. Um, there's a chance I may have a small vacuum leak yet, even though the only vacuum I have is coming from the throttle body. Um, but they're, I don't know, it just, it's just hard to explain. I'd really have to like carry a cam around the whole time, but let's see what this will do. seconds off the limiter and then let the idles drop and then kill the car so let's I guess let's just do it and just give it a few minutes I guess and fire it up and see what happens all right well I'm pretty confident that didn't really do much of anything but uh, I won't know until I spin around the block so let's go that did and changed nothing. So what I'm gonna do now is just set everything back to how it was before I had the idler control valve. So I don't have to unbolt the idler control valve at all. I am just going to um, unplug it and then set everything back to where it was. Except for really quick before I do anything else, I'm gonna pop my intake off, cover my hand on the throttle body, see if the car stalls out as it should, and see if maybe my throttle body is leaking, which could also be giving me these jerking issues, but I do not know. I don't know. Very stressed, very frustrated. So I gotta adjust my throttle stop a hair anyway because it does feel like it's sticking pretty bad. Um, let's see. Yeah, I mean, you might even be able to hear it. It's not supposed to sound like that, like that clicking sound. So to adjust the throttle stop on these K2 throttle bodies, at least a 70 mil, there's this back bolt uh, not right here, so you just loosen it with this, um, just like that, and then get your Allen key, whichever one it is, I think it's a two. Just uh, tighten this down a little bit, and that will then push the throttle open just a hair, so probably right about there, and then uh, try it out feels much smoother so maybe I just had it backed out just a hair uh, and then we'll just tighten this back up all right I didn't need that wrench anyway so uh, this should be good now I'm gonna just fire it up plug it with my hand and uh, see if the engine stalls out if it doesn't as you can see I uh, really don't have any vacuum lines like anywhere um, yeah, actually I don't have any vacuum lines, so my only source of vacuum would be around the throttle body here. So, uh, sorry, let me get down to your level. If, uh, if I 
cover that it doesn't stall out then my throttle body is leaking somewhere I would guess around the gasket because I was having some sealing issues around the gasket on the side here it wasn't wanting to line up correctly for whatever reason um, but if it does stall out then I know that that is not my issue so fire it up really quick that's a good sign that means I don't have any vacuum leaks so I guess let's just start by resetting everything back to how it was I'll disconnect the other control valve really quick um, plug in the laptop make some adjustments I've got my key tuner loaded up right now um, and I just found something actually that I may if I don't smack everything have something to do with what I was going on so I told you guys that my tuner told me last time when I got tuned a few months back when I get an idler control valve just plug it in I don't have to mess with anything but I think we both or he must have forgot to mention or I forgot that he had told me or something either or either way um, I forget under here so under the uh, disable monitors disables and monitors so I've got all this list of stuff to disable and right down here PO511 for idler control valve that is checked so that's disabled right now so I'm gonna try enabling it and see what this does. Uh, my TPS calibration, this is what I don't like about K-Tuners, my TPS calibration, this is it. There's no scaling it like you can on Hundata, which I know, I know, whatever. So I guess let's, uh, I guess let's try this. So with the uh, idler control valve now enabled, I'm gonna spin around the block quick and see if it makes any sort of difference. tuned hall effect sensor uh, may have taken a dump so I may have partially figured this out um, I couldn't show you guys while I was driving but let me show you the computer right now so my TPS my TPS is reading from 0 to 70 percent for the most part um, like it should. Now I know some of you guys are going to be like, oh it needs to be reading 100%, but K-Tuner no matter what does not read 100%. Uh, that's just how James scales it. Whatever. Uh, I don't understand it either. But when I was driving, even at wide open throttle, I was lucky to see 5% just now. So I only took it around the block, but I just put the pedal to the floor to see what would happen. And it only went to 5% and the rest of the time it was sitting at 0 and like 1%. So um, that's obviously not supposed to happen which tells me that I think my sensor is bad or I may have a uh, loose connection somewhere. So I'm gonna go and test for my connections really quick. And then, yeah, but I think my uh, my fancy K-Tune thing must have taken a dump on me. But you know, that can't happen because it's K-Tune quality. So I got everything back to more or less how it was before, uh, before I put the idler control valve on. I took the throttle body off, I plugged the, took the idler control valve off, plugged the holes again, and um, opened the throttle body a little bit, disabled the monitors. But TPS must be bad. Give it a listen. Or actually watch the percentage and listen. So the 
fact that it's not giving me any partial throttle and it's not registering the correct numbers for uh, like more open throttle, pretty sure my TPS is bad. Yeah, so I did finally figure this out. It has been a couple days now since those last clips and uh, getting frustrated with everything. So I have a buddy whose brother has the same throttle body I do. He was having the same issues that I was, except for he was a lot more patient than I am. So he uh, ended up messing with this stuff, taking the throttle body completely apart, inspecting the sensors and the mechanics of the throttle body and everything. And he figured out exactly what the issue is. So I don't want to necessarily spill the beans on what he did, but I want to explain to you guys that it is um, not necessarily the sensor that was at fault. So I did change to an Acuity Hall Effect style um, and Brian at Hasport, I lent him my K-Tuned Hall Effect and he's going to try it on other throttle bodies to see if the issue is the sensor as well or if it's just this throttle body's design. So basically what's going wrong is in here under the sensor, you know there's a little piece that the sensor sits on. Essentially it is not big enough. It is just a design flaw with these dual bolt pattern PRB RBC 70 millimeter cast throttle bodies that K-Tune sells. So it's still K-Tune's fault, whatever, I know. Um, just hate me for disliking their products, whatever. Don't really care, but yeah, it is this throttle body's issue. So basically what we ended up doing was modifying it slightly and using the acuity sensor just to make sure that, because we knew the sensor worked. So my throttle is good to go now, car responds just as it should, numbers are all good, normal. Um, I did stumble across another issue, the cheap Amazon idle air control valve. I bought the valve is like stuck open right off the get-go, so can't win on that one. So my idle is sitting high right now at like 1400, but you know, I'll just find another throttle about or another uh, IAC idle air control valve. So that's all good, but I just wanted to end this video on a more positive note that I did get it figured out. And if any of you guys ever decide to go get a K-Tune throttle body, as of right now, steer away from the cast 70 mil dual bolt pattern PRB RBC um, throttle bodies because they are just there is a design flaw and I don't know if it's been addressed with them yet or if they're going to change it but either way either bump it up to the 72 or just get the full cast aluminum or the full billet aluminum one um, don't go for the cast 70 mil anyways guys thanks for sticking around um, if you enjoyed the video if you found this bit useful you know what to do like comment subscribe um, yeah anyways guys just love you for the rest and uh, I will see you in the next video peace out.